Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Poland Daily History. Today we are at the city of Lublin, one of the largest and most historical cities of eastern Poland. We will be speaking to Mr. Huber Manchik, Chief Heritage Protection Officer, about some of the most beautiful buildings of Lublin and the history behind them. One of the more fascinating buildings and more historical buildings in the Lupin Old Town is known as the Crown Tribunal. And as I know, it served a special function for the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. I was wondering if you can tell me a little bit about the building and what function it served. The Crown Tribunal in Lublin was founded in 1578. It was called by Stefan Batory, the King of Poland and the Republic. Earlier, the prerogatives of judging, the authority to judge, lied with royalty. But because the royal court in such a big state ceased being efficient, as the king was unable to settle all these cases, it got to a point where at the end of the 16th century, in 1578, there were separate courts for nobility in the crown, so old Poland and in Lithuania. These were tribunals. The Lithuanian tribunal was in Vilnius and later Navachrudak, while the crown tribunal was in two places, Piotrków, later known as Piotrków Trybunalski, and Lublin. It was the same team of judges, judges who were selected every year in autumn during a session in Piotrków. In Piotrków they settled cases from the provinces of Greater Poland and Mazovia, while in Lublin from Lesser Poland and Ruthenia, so the bigger and richer part of the Polish Republic. The result was that Lublin, during the 17th and 18th century, was a city in which for half the year, half the people in the Republic, particularly the more important figures would be, because anyone who had a court case had to go to Lublin. This led to the reconstruction of the former town hall into a tribunal building. The tribunal was situated in the town hall. Every year, sessions would take place in the town hall building for more than a half year. During this time, city councillors and the mayor had to leave the town hall and perform their functions either in their homes or townhouses designated for them to work in. But the calling of the tribunal and headquarters of it in Lublin wasn't the only reason for the rebuilding and transformation of the former town hall buildings. Due to the constant presence of magnates and nobles from all over Poland, there was a need to have quarters for these people. That's also why Polish nobility and Polish magnates built palaces in Lublin. Every important noble and magnate had three separate palaces of their own. They had their main residential quarters. They had to have a palace in Warsaw to be near the same and the king, and apart from those, a palace in Lublin, in order to be near the courts. Some of them rented tenement houses, to which more stories were added, known as the tribunal stories, in which judges and those who had come to Lublin to go to court stayed, or they built palaces. In 1660, there were over 110 manor houses and noblemen's palaces. Some of them have remained until today, some of them were rebuilt into tenements. Walking around Lublin, to this day we can see the former Czartoryski Palace, the Lubomirski Palace and many other palaces from the 17th and 18th centuries. The Crown Tribunal building was transformed at the end of the 17th century and then again in 1781 into what it is now, founded by King Stanisław Augustus and the reconstruction was done by royal architect Domenico Merlini, known for the many interesting classic buildings he put up for King Stanisław Augustus in Warsaw. The current form of the tribunal building comes from that time. Today it is occupied by part of the departments of the Lublin City Council, first and foremost the wedding hall. From the point of view of Polish history and the monuments we have in Poland, it could be said that the Crown Tribunal is very underappreciated, particularly by the residents of Lublin, but not only, because from the point of view of how much it meant in Polish history, it's a monument comparable to the royal castles in Warsaw and Wawel. These were the headquarters of the king and the same, and here we had the headquarters of justice, the headquarters of an independent,
and self-governing noble judiciary, which in truth by the 18th century had degenerated and became less efficient, which gave birth to legends such as the story of the devil's handprint, in which bribed members of the tribunal were supposedly told by a widow wronged by the court that devils could judge this case better than judges, and at night devils were to turn up and settle the case themselves. We don't know, of course, what this legend was based on, but it came about very early in the 17th century. Interestingly, the same legend is in Piotrkov Trybunalski, so we don't know if it first came about in Lublin or Piotrkov. Why is this tribunal important? Because in Piotrkov, an analogous building of the Crown Tribunal didn't survive, it was taken down in the 19th century. Meanwhile, the Lublin Tribunal continued to perform its court functions and has survived until today in the form it was in in the 18th century. The oldest parts of the building are from the end of the 14th and the beginning of the 15th century. They are preserved in the basements, but the building's current form, which we can view in the Lublin marketplace, comes from the 18th century, from the time of Domenico Mellini. The Crown Tribunal brought a new level of quality to the Polish judiciary. Instead of the king settling the legal matters, a corps of well-educated judges would spend part of the year in Piotrków Trybunalski and the rest in Lublin to settle all the legal cases in the Kingdom of Poland. Next up, we will speak with Mr. Monsik about the difference between the Crown Tribunal in Lublin and the one in Piotrków Trybunalski. So I was wondering, what are the relations between the tribunal in Piotrków and the Crown Tribunal here in Lublin? What are the cases handled and how are they decided now which one goes where? W Piotrkowie sądzono sprawy z Wielkopolski i Mazowsza, mm -hmm. natomiast w Lublinie sądzono sprawy z terenu Małopolski i Rusi. Even though Piotrków handled cases from Greater Poland and Mazowia, while Lublin handled cases from Lesser Poland and Ruthenia, it was the same team of judges who were selected once per year in Piotrków in early autumn. The tribunal in Piotrków first handled all the cases from Greater Poland. Most of the time these cases were resolved before Christmas, and then the members of the tribunal would move to Lublin, although tribunal sessions did not take place in Lublin until what is known as Przewodnia Niedziela, the first Sunday after Easter, but this didn't stop people heading to Lublin much earlier for the carnival, because in Lublin social life blossomed much more than in Piotrków. The wealthier landowners came here, because the biggest fortunes of the nobility and magnates were in Lesser Poland and Ruthenia. The most serious court cases were dealt with here, ones that involved greater assets. People started to make their way to Lublin right after Christmas. For the entire carnival period, the city was a place for balls, meetings and a lively social life, which made it a good place for trade. Although in the 16th century, Lublin lost its position as a very big center for trade, located on the route between Eastern and Western Europe. But thanks to the fact that the tribunal functioned in Lublin, it meant that it remained a tourist city of sorts. At first, the tribunal courts were fast and efficient. Unfortunately, over time, and it happens that institutions of this sort tend to betray themselves, the tribunal courts became corrupt, something people complained about a lot. This was emphasized at the end of the 17th century in various publications and in satires, at how much these judges were corrupted by feasts, which they were invited to in various places, and how corrupted they were by the wealthier owners, hence the legend of the devil's handprint and devil's court. Unfortunately, things could also become dangerous during tribunals in Lublin. Historical information unfortunately points to the fact that some gentlemen tried to get the result they wanted using force, but fortunately this was quite rare. The tribunal generally worked well, at least until the mid-17th century. Later cases were delayed, there were many more of them, and there were instances where they went on for a very long time and were not dealt with fairly, but thanks to the tribunal having their headquarters here in Lublin, the city held the status of being one of the most important cities in the Republic during the 17th and 18th centuries, one of the most important and one of the biggest. The city of Lublin is not just one of the oldest cities of all of Poland, but also one of the best preserved. 
Thanks to the meticulous work of historians and the heritage protection officers, future generations will get the opportunity to witness centuries of history firsthand. That's it for today. I'm your host, Benjamin Lee. I'll see you next time on Poland Daily History.